Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Live at Four on this Tuesday. Cleaned up the gardens over the past weekend. I think the growing season's over. It's a big job, though. You got to cut down the hostas yeah. and rake up the mm -hmm. leaves. So we have an opportunity to get some great advice about your lawn and garden this fall with Lisa Briggs from the Bruce Company. She'll be taking your calls later on in this hour. We'll let you know when to call in. But first, here's what's making news on this Tuesday. Hundreds of volunteers have been walking through swamps, cornfields, and woods in the search for clues that could lead authorities to a missing Wisconsin 13-year-old. The caravan of migrants heading through Mexico pause for the day in respect for one of the marchers who died during the march. And you can't drive to the polls on election day, no problem. A local pharmacy will get you there. Very interesting, and the election day is coming up fast. Two weeks from today. Jamie Perez will have details on that. First, let's take a look outside today. Another beautiful fall day. This is the moon set this morning. Yeah, full moon. I think tonight is the full moon. It's pretty spectacular. What a great Halloween-looking picture. Yeah, it really is. You just need like an owl or something <laughs> perched on a branch there. The weather words, pleasantly chilly and the... Always pleasant. Dana Fulton is in the backyard with a look at our forecast. Yes, yes. So uh, right now it's nice and sunny. Hard to even think, of course, uh, nighttime darkness. What's that? No, it's going to be spooky here in a few hours, of course. We'll have a clear sky overnight. Should be a, a beautiful, clear shot of the moon for you. No threat for any sort of cloud coverage or any sort of rain overnight, or at least uh, for much Wednesday either with that. It's just going to be a little chilly outside overnight for us and for tomorrow. Currently, though, uh, pretty pleasant. We're sitting close to 52, 54 in Janesville. Same goes for Middle Point, about 53 in Monroe right now. So a little below average for our highs today. And in the last 24 hours, we've dropped quite a bit. Uh, no longer in the 60s for us, about a 10 degree drop in Madison just in the last 24 hours. Thanks to that wind direction completely shifting now coming from the north northwest, uh, staying in the single digits. So not a gusty day at all. Barely even a light breeze for us out here right now. Again, very pleasant over the next few hours if you're having any outdoor evening plans. Tomorrow, it'll be just a few degrees warmer for parts of the afternoon. High temps will be in the low 50s with some sunshine. We'll take a closer look at that forecast for the rest of the week in just a few minutes right now. See how the roads are looking. Good news, no accidents to report. Uh, bouncing over to 51, a little bit of a slowdown there before Buckeye Road. Uh, northbound and southbound going about 32 miles per hour. The other side of town, Middleton, seeing some delays, but again, no accidents. And then bouncing a little further south to Janesville right now. They seem to be rolling along quite smoothly. From 39 all the way up. From Janesville to the Beltline will take you 28 minutes. From Middleton to Sox City, 17. And the same goes for downtown to Sun Prairie. A lot of green out there, so it should be a fairly smooth drive. Uh, the forecast the rest of the evening also looking smooth. We'll yes. talk about that more in a little bit. Grab the shades if you're heading west. Yes, yes, All absolutely. Right, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dana. First at four, volunteers are scouring an area in northwestern Wisconsin looking for any sign of a missing girl. It has been eight days now and still no sign of Jamie Claus in Barron County. Eric Franke is in the studio with us with more on the search that has brought thousands to a small northwest Wisconsin community. Eric? That's right, Mark. Susan, the sheriff there asked for 2,000 volunteers yesterday, and they are out in the masses today doing anything to turn up signs of Jamie Kloss. It was last Monday when her parents were found shot to death in their barren home. Today, those volunteers were split in groups told to look for anything that could be a clue, a cell phone, a piece of clothing, a gun, anything. And the sheriff says many tips led them to conduct this continued search with people walking through those swamps, the woods, the cornfields, each for their own reasons. Because I can and I'm able and um, there's a little girl missing. And if it was mine, I'd want the world to be looking for her. So I'm able to be here. Coming out to support a community, uh, I played basketball against these guys in high school and just something nice to do, help out a community, look for someone. As we mentioned, they split these volunteers into 14 groups, each group with about 150 volunteers instructed to comb assigned areas in a line, as you're seeing there in that video. Anything unusual was flagged. We have no word yet on if they found anything of note just yet. Barron, of course, a very small community, a little over 3,000. This has been very difficult for the residents there. A gathering of hope was held for Jamie last night at Barron High School. Hundreds attended that, but many of those in the search today have come from miles away, counties away, hoping to help bring Jamie home. Mark and Susan? Hoping for some good news. Thank you, Eric. 
A bakery that has filled Madison's east side with the smell of fresh bread for more than 90 years is being shut down. The company that owns the Sara Lee Bakery on East Washington told its employees this morning it'll be closing in January. It will affect almost 160 people. Bimbo Bakeries USA announced it would shift production to other facilities in the region. Some of the people will be offered other positions within the company. The facility first opened in 1926 as Gardner Bakery. Bimbo is its fifth owner. The president of Turkey is not buying the explanation of the Saudis about what happened to journalist Jamal Khashoggi. The Saudis claim that Khashoggi died during a fistfight shortly after he entered their consulate in Turkey on October 2nd and claim it was an interrogation gone wrong. But the Turkish president says it was a planned operation and he called on the 18 suspects in Saudi custody to be treated in Turkish courts. Jamal Khashoggi was murdered inside the consular premises, inside the consular building. This brutal murder um, of a journalist, of an innocent man, of a dissident, will not go without an American response. President Trump dispatched CIA Director Gina Haspel to get the latest on the investigation and Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin met with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. But President Trump has ruled out any response which would stop the multi-billion dollar sale of weapons to the Saudis as retribution for Khashoggi's death. The largest ever recorded caravan of migrants from Central America has grown to an estimated 7,200 people. They're headed for the U.S. border near San Diego. Adriana Diaz is with the migrants in southern Mexico. Migrants are resting in the town of Huixla in southern Mexico, and they're paying their respects to a fellow traveler who died when he fell from a vehicle Monday. It's also a chance to gather strength after days of grueling travel in sweltering heat. Senora, ¿de dónde eres? This woman from Honduras is making the journey with her family, which includes four young children. She told us Mexicans have been very generous along the way and that she hopes God will help her family enter the U.S. Thousands of migrants crossed into Mexico from Guatemala Sunday. Each day over the past two days, they've been walking about 25 miles. And if you think about that, that's about the same distance as a marathon. So these people are walking a marathon's distance every day, and they'll have to keep it up for more than a month. They are determined to reach the U.S. border crossing at Tijuana, but President Trump says they won't be allowed in. The president claims the caravan includes MS-13 gang members and Middle Eastern terrorists, although he's offered no evidence. Every person we've encountered comes from Honduras. Many of them told us they just want to reach the U.S. to find work. Adriana Diaz, CBS News, Huixtla, Mexico. And Mexico hopes to disperse the caravan long before it can reach the border, telling migrants to register with authorities in order to submit applications for asylum in Mexico. Chief Justice John Roberts says he is saddened to learn that Sandra Day O'Connor, the first woman to serve on the Supreme Court, has the beginning stages of dementia. O'Connor made the announcement in a letter this morning. She says her diagnosis was made some time ago and her condition has progressed. She says she is no longer able to participate in public life. O'Connor is 88 years old. She was nominated by President Ronald Reagan and took her seat on the court in 1981. With elections just two weeks away now, a lot of people have the luxury of driving themselves to their polling places. But what about the people who can't drive or just don't have a mode of transportation? Well, our Jamie Perez shares how one local business is helping some people get out to vote and make sure they can get to the polls. Sure thing. So a lot of people can tend to forget how many people do not have access to reliable transportation. It's something we might even take for granted for those of us who can drive or those of us who do have access to a car. Well, the Fitchburg Family Pharmacy is offering free rides on election day to make sure anyone who can vote does. The owner of the pharmacy says this is the first year they're doing it. He said it came about through hearing of too many people who use the no rides excuse to not get out and vote. He said he wants to make voting this year as easy and as free as possible. I have a mission of serving our community here at uh, Fitchburg Family Pharmacy. Uh, we feel it's important to uh, embed ourselves in the community and so if there's nothing more 
uh, that I can think of nothing more that we can do than to help people get to the polls so that they can have their voice heard and be represented by people they choose. If you want to use that service, you can call the number at the bottom of your screen or call on Election Day, that's November 6th, to schedule a free ride. And no, you do not have to be a customer or a patient at this pharmacy to get that ride. They are for everyone. Coming up tonight at 6, meet the driver who is volunteering her own time and changing a bit of her normal routine to make sure she can help as many people get out and vote as she can. I was going to ask you, you have to be a customer? No, you don't. No, Just you don't. Call up. You All can right. do it, you can do it, I can do it, anybody. <laughs> Very All good. right, Jamie, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Jamie. The jackpot for tonight's Mega Millions Lottery is shattering records. We'll have the numbers and the breakdown of the odds of winning when Live at Four continues. Welcome back. Hurricane Willa, an extremely dangerous Category 4 storm, weakened slightly as it veered toward popular tourist resorts on Mexico's Pacific coast. Officials in the state of Nayarit have ordered all shops and businesses in six municipalities closed ahead of the landfall of Willa. Authorities closed ports, canceled classes, and suspended beachside and marine activities in some stretches of the Pacific coast. Puerto Vallarta residents in uh, it, residents there were busy filling sandbags and boarding up shop windows as they prepared for the worst, but 
hope for the best. Well, for the first time, Instagram surpassed Snapchat as the most used app among American teenagers. 85% of the teens surveyed by the investment bank Piper Jaffrey said they used Instagram at least once a month. That compares with 84% who said they used Snapchat. The same amount, Snapchat's popularity dropped after its February redesign was widely criticized. Instagram also benefited from added features that Snapchat had first, like vanishing stories and direct message photos. Some weak earnings reports fueled another sell-off on Wall Street. The Dow Industrials uh -oh. lost, uh, just follow me along here, <laughs> lost 126 points, ending the day at 25,191. The NASDAQ Composite Index gave up 31. The S&P 500 fell 15. Well, people around the country are trying their luck in hopes of winning the world's largest ever lottery jackpot. The drawing for tonight's Mega Millions now stands at a record 1.6 billion dollars. It'll be over two billion if there's no hmm. winner tonight. Tom Hansen has the story from New York. No ticket, no chance. Mega Millions mania intensified hours before the drawing. I am that one. You're the one. It is my time, yes. With people from coast to coast trying to hit those six lucky numbers. It never stops. Never stops. And dreaming of what they do next. Would you buy anything? A villa somewhere, maybe? I probably would open up a restaurant. In Alabama, where tickets aren't sold, many cross state lines to Georgia for a chance at the action. It's like gambling. I mean, you're, you don't spend more than you can afford to lose. The chances of winning tonight's jackpot are about 300 million to one, and the people in New York face the stiffest taxes if they win. This woman says she has a strategy. I try to go with like my kid's birthday, you know, today's day, the year. Jackie and Gil Cisneros of Southern California won a $266 million jackpot in 2010 and have some advice. Be smart about the decisions that you make so that you don't make those mistakes that are kind of cliche with lottery winners. Wish me luck. Tonight's Mega Millions jackpot has grown for months without a winner. If no one wins tonight, it could reach $2 billion. In New York, Tom Hansen for WISC News 3. And if you win Mega Millions tonight, you'll make history. The $1.6 billion jackpot is the biggest ever. Okay, so what are your odds of winning? We don't want to be a killjoy here, but here, here's a little reality check. They are one in 302.5 million. That's so you're, all? You're more likely to be killed by a shark. That's one in 3.7 million. Also more likely to be struck by lightning. National Geographic says that's one in 3,000. Wow. It's also <laughs> the same the same odds of rolling a die and getting the same number 11 times in a row. So, so let's you, try it. You feel unlucky? <laughs> yeah, let's see. Okay. Uh, six. six. Okay, All right. try it again. You got to get it 11 times in a row. Up. Oh. <laughs> Five. <laughs> it rolled off the end. So we're done. <laughs> Just think about that, to roll the same number on a die 11 times in a row. I know, but that's like talking about how many calories there are on Thanksgiving. It's just like, let's just let everybody dream a little bit. Here, here we'll try it. Here we go. Here, I'll try it. You try it. Okay. Three. Three. Two. So, there you go. <laughs> just lost. <laughs> we're done. We're done. Good luck, though. Yeah. Somebody's got to win eventually, right? I'll try again. Six. Six. Two. No. <laughs> Done. Still to come at four. Many people go to a spa for a back rub or a facial. When we come back, you may be missing the best part of a spa day. There's a new beauty trend that focuses on an often neglected part of your body. I'm Eliana Diaz, and I'll show you why people are choosing a Japanese head spa treatment.
Take a look at this. You've come a long way, baby. At just six months old, little Harper has been to all 50 states. Her parents started the whirlwind trip during her mother's maternity leave in June. On October 18th, the family crossed into Vermont, completing the 50-state journey. The couple's now trying to find out if Harper is the youngest person ever to do this. Oh, I love it. I lo I'd love to see the Wisconsin picture. I yeah. wonder where they were. Yeah, I wonder where they were, too. Great tours? Wow. Oh, that's cool. What a great idea. It's pretty glad. Today is Tuesday, October 23rd. This is the day the Swallows depart from San Juan Capistrano for their winter vacation 6,000 miles to the south in Goya, Argentina. Yeah. I was a little girl when I lived in California. My parents used to take me to see the Swallows at San Juan Capistrano. Uh, coming back. Yeah. You never hear about the departure date. No, that's true. 6,000 yeah. miles. Isn't that incredible? That's, that's incredible. wild. Yeah. It it's also slap your irritating co-worker day. We're assuming <laughs> this is tongue-in-cheek. Don't do it. Don't do it. I gotta encourage that. It's also, of course, in honor of the World Series starting tonight in Boston, National Boston Cream Pie Day. Yum. Of course, it is the cake with a bit of an identity crisis. In 1859, at Boston's Parker House Hotel, the chef there created the pudding and cake combination, which comprises two layers of sponge cake filled with vanilla custard and then topped with a chocolate glaze. Boston Cream Pie is the official dessert of Massachusetts. I That's fair. Pie. I do too. It's My mother used to make this all the time. Delicious. Really? Yeah. Want to do the honors? We'll serve Dana up quite a slice. Spongy. There you go. <laughs> of course we don't. <laughs> oh, oh, hey. There you go. Do we have four? Yes. We do have there four. you go. Okay. Okay. Enjoy, Dana. Thank you. Thank you. Try to get chocolate in my teeth before take, we're going to talk about the Take weather. dessert outside. It is. Take dessert outside day, national. <laughs> <laughs> it is really pleasant outside for us. A little chilly, though, so maybe grab the jacket along with the shades. We're going to take a look at the forecast for tonight and the rest of the week in just a few minutes.
sunshine, sunshine and sunshine. It was a lovely day for us as we look at our visible cloud track. I'm not even really even seeing any clouds throughout much of Wisconsin. Up north, a few clouds up there. But otherwise, we had a nice clear sky today. And of course, no threat for any sort of rainfall. Uh, we'll stay nice and dry overnight and through our Wednesday, our Doppler track. Almost as boring as our visible cloud track in a good way. We're sitting close to 52 right now in Madison, closer to about six, or 53 in Lone Rock and 54 in Mineral Point. So a mellow evening, but it is already just a little cooler than where we were at about 24 hours ago. And of course, we didn't get as warm yesterday as what we are right now or what we got to today. Our wind direction has shifted a little bit coming from the north northwest rather than that southern flow in the single digits. So it's not too breezy outside, but it is that cooler air coming on in. So we are planning on another cool night. High pressure is going to stay in control of the forecast overnight. Our cold front's now well southeast and our next weather maker isn't going to come in until well into the end of the week. So we'll enjoy the sunshine for this evening and the clear sky ahead for your Wednesday. We won't see any shakeups uh, until we get again for the next few days. So clear tonight, temps will drop uh, pretty low, close to 30 to start off our Wednesday. A little bit of a chilly start to our Wednesday morning, and then bouncing ahead to Wednesday afternoon. Uh, we'll see highs yet again in the low 50s, but as we get closer to your drive home, I'm close to 48 for us on Wednesday. Clear for the drive home, so if you are heading west, grab the shades. By Wednesday night into Thursday, though, it's starting to become a little more partly cloudy, and then clouds really building in overnight Thursday with our next chance for some slight showers Thursday night and into Friday. For us, things are staying mellow for friends down, of course, across the border in Mexico, uh, dealing with Hurricane Willow right now, a very strong category three hurricane, even though it has weakened just a little bit, still a powerful storm getting closer to landfall here soon. Uh, right now, sustained winds at about 120 miles per hour. The storm is going to continue to move north, northeast, uh, just at about 10 miles an hour, so not too fast, but we are looking again at landfall later on overnight or early, early, early Wednesday, but likely later this evening. Evening. And then as we head into Thursday morning, starting to get close again to impact the southern edge of Texas. But it's going to fall apart fairly quickly just because there is so much terrain for that storm to encounter. Sunshine right now. You can see the glare coming in on the camera. Usually you get a little clearer picture, but not when it's this clear outside. 52 the high for today. That's where we're sitting at currently. Again, we should be a little closer to the mid 50s, about 56 our average high. Overnight lows were a little cooler than average too, but otherwise a pleasantly chilly day. Another chilly evening. Continued chilly, continued cold, mostly clear tonight. So you should have a perfect view of the sky and the moon this evening. Tomorrow temperatures will land in the low 50s again. So a similar forecast today, mostly sunny, just a little cool outside. So keep that in mind for your forecast for tomorrow. Make sure you got the jacket because it is going to be just a little cool. As we look ahead through the next five days, even into the next 10 days, uh, we're really expecting a little more weather to start to move on in. Temps aren't going to move around too much as we get towards the end of the week into Thursday and Friday. We're just going to watch some clouds build in and that slight chance for some showers. Coming in late Thursday overnight, we have that slight chance. Temps won't drop as much Thursday night or Friday night because of the clouds overhead. A slight chance during the day on Friday for some showers, but we're not going to see much sunshine. It'll stay fairly cloudy. And then this weekend, looking at scattered rainfall both Saturday and Sunday with the chance to have a bit of a wintry mix in there as well overnight Saturday and Sunday as temps will drop into the mid 30s. Looking ahead into next week, we're going to have a chance for rain as we get closer to Halloween. Unfortunately, it is going to be a little cooler, so maybe just check the forecast. Download the weather app. It's really easy to use to check the radar before you head out the door for Halloween. Uh, make sure you have a warm Halloween costume plan. That would be my recommendation for next Wednesday. That chance for rain, thankfully, right now looks like it's going to be coming in uh, late Tuesday night. And then as we head into Wednesday, but the ideal situation, of course, if we can get that first round of showers in as early as possible on Wednesday, that would be muy perfecto. That's a week off. Things can change a little Exactly, bit. exactly. Very flexible with the timing, but uh, I gotta admit, I, got, I used to check Halloween's forecast like 20 <laughs> days out. I mean, yeah. no. So. Get a waterproof costume ready. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Or it's just a little cute little haunted umbrella. It's kind of work. That's there you perfect. go. I get it. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. A facial typically stops at the hairline, leaving your scalp neglected. As Ileana Diaz shows us, there is a new beauty trend called head spa that targets the problem. So can you see the dangers you have? Yeah, I do. As an actress in Hollywood, Nicole Sterrett tries to keep her golden locks shiny and healthy. Yikes. But scalp issues have her trying out a new head spa to get to the root of her problem. <laughs> this is really, it's shocking to see it. 
The 30 to 60 minute treatment is like a facial for your scalp. A special camera magnifies the scalp up to 200 times, revealing every follicle, strand of hair, and buildup of sweat and oil. We have to analyze and then we treat. Sayaka Nita at Blow Me Away Salon learned this technique in Japan and brought it to Los Angeles. Scalp has a pressure point, a lot of pressure point, so it connects to the body. Treatment begins with aromatherapy, then steam removes buildup and deep cleans the pores, followed by a head massage to promote blood flow. Blood brings the nutrition to, and the oxygen to hair and skin. So right here is a heart. Nita says health benefits include reduced muscle tension and stress release, which is why the trend is growing nationwide, with boutique head spas and big chains like Aveda offering scalp services costing between $45 to $150. Okay, what's about right here? Oh, my God. After an hour, a cleaner and healthier scalp. You look shocked to yeah. see what was on your scalp. I was. Where did it go? It feels as good as it looks, so I guess it feels a lot healthier. Leaving Nicole ready to book her next session. Ileana Diaz, CBS News, Los Angeles. Hmm. Get itchy just watching that. <laughs> Akara Nitta says different health issues can cause scalp problems, including changing hormones. She recommends the treatment for teenagers and adults. Kind of feels great. Kind of gross, though, isn't it? <laughs> I think it's cool. I'd like to try it. Okay. Well, now that you're done in the <laughs> spa, how about doing a little cooking? All right. Consumer Reports has the pros and cons of those new induction cooktop sets when Live at Four continues.
like the Hoofer Sailing Club yeah. is out on Lake Mendota on this Tuesday afternoon. Got to seize these beautiful you fall do. days. Like many Americans, you might be thinking about buying a new range or cooktop because those big holiday meals, Thanksgiving and Christmas, are right around the corner. If you haven't gotten one in a while and you don't use gas, you may hear a new term, induction ranges or cooktops. Lena Lynchide and Consumer Reports tells us why, what they are and why they're worth considering. If you're shopping for a range and have decided to go for a smooth top electric, you have one more big decision to make. Should you spend a little more and spring for something called an induction cooktop? They're similar in appearance, and in fact, the oven operation is no different. But the way the induction cooktop heats and the way it performs is what sets it apart. Here's the science behind how it works. Well, instead of a red hot element below this glass surface for induction cooktops, the element below the surface generates an electromagnetic field. The field interacts with the pot, and the pot itself gets hot. Every induction range and cooktop Consumer Reports tested had high power burners that provide quick cooktop heat and superb simmering. Here's something that's kind of cool too, literally. See how only half of this chocolate bar is melting? That's because the pan is very hot, but right next to it isn't. And that's a difference between induction and a radiant cooktop. Induction ranges are getting cheaper. You can get a CR recommended model for around $1,000. This Frigidaire gallery got excellent ratings for heating and speed. A couple of things to keep in mind. Induction burners don't glow like radiant smooth tops do when they're hot. Some manufacturers have added imitation flames so you can tell when it's on. And if your current cookware isn't magnetic, you will have to replace it. Try sticking a magnet to the bottom to check. If it sticks, it will conduct heat on the induction cooktop. You can check for this induction approved icon on the bottom of the cookware you're considering. One other drawback, a buzz or hum is common when using the higher settings and you might notice clicking sounds on lower settings. For WISC News 3, this is Leah Lynchide. And Consumer Reports advises that some induction cooktop manufacturers recommend that people with pacemakers should check with their doctors. The ad mag mm -hmm. ad magnetic field could pose a risk to certain users. A lot to consider if yeah. you're thinking about doing that. But that was interesting. It is. It is interesting. Well, fall is a very busy time in the lawn and garden. Lisa Briggs is here to help answer your questions. Call now 270-9933 to talk to Lisa. What are we talking about today, Lisa? Well, you know, one morning we've got frost and the next afternoon we're out on the lake in a sailboat. So what's a gardener to do when the weather seesaws up and down? Give me a call if you're confused and have questions. <laughs>
still good news in my corner. A lot of green and no accidents to report at this time. As far as drive times, though, zooming in a little bit closer, just south of Buckeye Road on 51. Uh, still seeing that slow down both north and eastbound, actually closer to 25 miles per hour and 23 northbound. And we were up in the 30s just a little bit ago. Middleton still looks OK. Verona still looks OK. And if we bounce down to Janesville, uh, not seeing any hiccups down in that direction uh, either. So everything through Dane County, as long as you have your sunglasses on, you should be OK. From Janesville, the Beltline will take you about 28 minutes, 17 minutes for Sox City to Middleton and Sun Prairie to downtown. Again, a lot of green out there. Just drive carefully and safely uh, and you should be all good to go. Again, things are looking OK. It is just a little sunny. Mark Susan. All right, Dana, that could be worse than could being be worse. too sunny, right? That's right. Yeah. They are celebrating in Brussels today as the Smurfs turn 60. Dozens of children attended the anniversary of the beloved blue cartoon characters. The festivities includes a large cake and a virtual exhibit of the colony of tiny characters. Veronica Culliford, daughter of Pierre Culliford, the creator of the Smurfs, attended the event in Belgium. She said she was very happy that the characters remained popular. The Belgian cartoonist often worked under the pseudonym Pio Pio. He died in 1992. I did not know the Smurfs were Belgian. I didn't either. Interesting. And the world record holder for the largest collection of Smurf stuff is in is in Ripon. You're kidding, really? Have you done a story on that? No, but I just read the this the other day. Ah, interesting. interesting. All right, I hear, we, I hear we, Lisa. We can hear Lisa, Lisa in the background. We're anxious to get on, I guess. <laughs> We're taking your questions today for Lisa Briggs at the Bruce Company. The number 270-9933. Hello, Lisa. Hello, how are you guys Great, today? how are you? It's good. It's a beautiful day out. Yeah, it really is so. Who knew? Let's get to the question. We got lots of calls. Let's start with Jane in Janesville. Hi, Jane. Hi. What's your question? Hi. My question is, when do I cut back my hydrangeas? They're the cone-shaped ones that start out like white and turn pink. Okay. Uh, yep. Do I do that in fall or spring? You've got panicled hydrangeas, or as we like to call them, PGs. And so certainly a lot of people like to leave those flowers on for the winter because they look sort of attractive. Um, so you can prune them now if you don't like that look, or you can take those, those flower buds off in the spring. You just want to look for uh, cut just above some buds. The good thing about PG hydrangeas is that they will bloom on new growth, so whenever you prune them, it won't affect the flowers. All right, very good. Let's, let's go to Karen in Madison. Hi, Karen, what's your question? Yes, I have a grass question. Uh, the city replaced the sidewalk a couple days ago and seeded. Now, I heard your show a couple days ago where you said to not put on fertilizer at this point. Should we be watering the seed? If, yes, if, you have, if the city has put grass seed down, you need to make sure that it stays damp or it won't germinate. Actually, these cooler temperatures are great for germinating grass, and uh, lawns will continue to grow underground until the temperature reaches about 50 degrees, and it's not close to being there yet. So, yeah, make sure it gets a soak every couple of days if it doesn't rain. Yeah, the question, I think, from the noon show was, should you fertilize now? And you said it's too late for that. Yeah, I think it's not going to do much. It's hard to say, though, with the weather. Um, if we have an extended period of nice weather, the, you know, the fertilizer will do some good. If we suddenly get a dramatic drop in temps, then it's going to kind of sit there. If you have it, it's not going to hurt to put it in. I don't know that I'd make the special effort, though, to, like, you know, do a big production with it. But, keep but if you've got it hanging around, go ahead and put it down. But keep the water flowing. All but right. keep the water flowing if you've got new, new grass seed, yes. All right, let's go to uh, Sun Prairie now. Jim, hi, what's your question? Jim, you I there? I transplanted clematis this summer, and I'm wondering if I need to do anything with it now. Um, the, most of those big flowering clematis, you want to do their pruning in the spring. So wait for it to start to bud out, and then you can take out anything that has died back or looks brown. Just pull it off the trellises, but leave it for now. All right, very good. Let's go to Sharon in Columbus. Hi, Sharon. What's your question? Hi, I have a question about um, some pots that we had summer flowers in, and we've taken them out. And I was wondering if we could leave the pots out and put tulip bulbs or hyacinth bulbs, spring um, flowers bulbs in them and just leave them outside instead of just putting it in the ground? 
Well, when you put in spring bulbs to force, which is something that you'd want to start doing about now, you don't want to leave them in those pots exposed because they'll freeze and the bulbs will turn to mush. What you could do is get some plastic utility containers, plant your bulbs in those utility containers, and then put them, say, in your garage in like a cooler, like a big beer cooler, and then fertilize them, and then that will give them the chill period that they need to form flower buds, but it won't freeze your bulbs. All right, because the pot will freeze solid. The pot will freeze solid, and so will your bulbs. All right, let's go to Betty up in the Dells. Hi, Betty, what's your question? Yeah, I got a question about my fruit trees and my um, um, apple trees and um, pear trees. Can we trim, trim okay. those now? You want to wait till they're fully dormant. So when the leaves okay. fall off, a lot of people okay. wait till those nice days in like January. But you go, can go ahead and do it like in mid-November if the leaves are falling off. Make sure right. that you remove anything that's diseased, anything that's rubbing, or with fruit trees, any branches that are going straight up, and you just want to get yourself a nice, sharp pruning saw and make good, clean cuts. You don't need okay. to spray anything on them at all. They'll okay. heal themselves. Okay. Thank you for the call. But that's, Boy, that's, that's, quite a, <laughs> that's quite a tool you got there, Lisa. <laughs> I know. Pretty serious, isn't it? It is. I have, I have like a, you know, a, an, an elf who kind of hands me things. <laughs> yes, I think it was your clairvoyant. Mary in Blanch Blanchardville, what's your question? Um, I planted bulbs, and I just don't, it, it seems like the deer eat them all or underground rodents eat them all, and I just don't know what I can plant. Well, I will say that daffodils, allium, and things like um, fritillaria are less attractive to, to uh, critters eating them. The other thing you want to do is if you're doing things like tulips, make sure that when the little husks fall off that you get those cleaned up because it's like, you know, like breadcrumbs to where your bulbs are. You can also use a repellent product. This one happens to be Repelzol. Um, this you can... There's a granular form. You can kind of sprinkle it where you planted your bulbs, and that will help keep the creatures away from them. Which ones are the most popular with the critters? Tulips or? Tulips. Tulips. They love tulips. Okay. Well, get some of that spray, and maybe that saw will come in handy. <laughs> Lisa, <laughs> yeah, you, can, yeah, you can always go saw their heads off. Oh, that was gruesome. Yeah, it's been a we'll, long we'll, day. Let's leave, let's leave it there. Thank you, everyone, for calling in. We will see you next time. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Lisa. We'll be right back to the final check right. your forecast.
another hour or so to get out and enjoy the light. Absolutely. Sunset is just after 6 o'clock, so you do have a little more time. Overnight, temps are going to drop quite a bit. So heading into our Wednesday, we're planning on overnight lows in the upper 20s for us. By 7 o'clock, we're slowly, slowly climbing into the lower 30s. Throughout the afternoon, though, it will be sunny and a little cool. Temps will be through the 40s uh, with high temps very similar to today, again, in the low 50s. Overall, tomorrow's forecast quite similar to today. Uh, enjoy the sunshine because, unfortunately, the end of the week is going to hold a little more cloud coverage. Uh, the possibility for some showers, a slight chance heading into Friday and uh, maybe even a mix for the weekend. So An enjoy the sun. Active period coming up the way it looks. Yes, yes, we could see uh, a little more rain moving in, unfortunately. All right, enjoy it now. Yes. Thanks, yeah. Dana. Thanks, Dana. And coming up tomorrow here on Live Before, we sit down with a Q&A session with Democratic candidate for Senate incumbent Tammy Baldwin. Leah Vukmir will be on Thursday. And we travel with Harvey Briggs. Tough assignment for Harvey. He goes behind the wheel of a Rolls-Royce SUV in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. <laughs> really? That's tomorrow. You want to tune in for that. We'll be right back. In today's final touch, soon you too will be able to be king of the world. A replica of the Titanic is set to embark on its maiden voyage in 2022. Construction of the Titanic II was put on hold a few years ago because of financial dispute, but now the $500 million project is back on track. The ship will feature the same cabin layout as the original and will chase, trace the original's route from Southampton, England to New York City. The new ship will carry 2,400 passengers and nine.